it, it's better, right? Yeah, but it's still, it might surprise you just how inaccurate an awful lot of artillery was. Now, uh, in a, an early attack uh, against Germany um, in 1945, a fairly studied attack, it was found that fewer than 5% of the shells fired landed within 50 yards of a point target. By point target, I mean, it's not an area they're trying to hit. It's not, it's not a, a big barrage of an area. They're trying to hit a particular gun emplacement or something. So against a point target, only 5% were getting within 50 yards. When the Canadians uh, were attacking, uh, what was it, Bologna, uh, they fired, but well, they managed to, I don't know how many they fired actually, but they managed to land 6,000 shells within 150 yards of uh, a, a German AA battery that had eight guns firing away. So that's 6,000 artillery shells uh, landing within roughly the accuracy of a properly fired rocket from a typhoon. They managed to knock out just two of those uh, anti-aircraft guns, or put it another way, they managed to knock out two of the anti-aircraft guns. But here's the, you might say, surprising thing. The other six carried on firing, despite two of them being knocked out and this tremendous barrage of thousands of shells coming at them. The other six were able somehow to carry on firing. So, um, uh, in, in 1945, when the British were going forward, that same study I mentioned before, calculated that they fired um, half a million shells in one operation and killed 60 of the enemy. Half a million shells to kill just 60 of the enemy. It's beginning to look, isn't it, as though this bombardment stuff is just useless. It's just rubbish. It doesn't kill anyone. Um, well, I put it to you that actually killing people should not be the, the object. If you think that something has failed because it didn't hit, because it didn't kill, then I think you're missing the point. The object, surely, is not to kill people. In fact, wouldn't it be nice if we could avoid killing people? The object is to win the war. And you win wars not by killing absolutely everyone on the other side, particularly something like World War II. Just think of the scale. Um, what you do is you persuade the enemy to stop fighting. So how do you persuade the enemy to stop fighting? Well, you've got to get him to surrender. So uh, what you would like then is some sort of um, contagious behavior, because though it is occasionally the case that uh, commanders from on high order very large numbers of men to surrender all at once. So, for instance, the obvious uh, example, the fall of Singapore, British High Command ordered 60,000 British to surrender and they obeyed orders and they surrendered the biggest um, defeat for the British of all time. Um, but usually in a war, it's small numbers, perhaps one platoon, a company at most, taking prisoners of uh, small numbers of the enemy. And so you've got to find out some localized way of getting guys to surrender because surrendering is contagious, whereas death is not contagious. If uh, uh, I'm here in a position with a load of my uh, uh, men in, in, in my unit and I see over there, forward and left of us, uh, there's another uh, lot of us and they get attacked by the enemy and they are all killed. I don't think to myself, yeah, dying. Yeah, that's a good idea. Should we give that a go? It's not a contagious behavior. People don't die because other people have died. But if I see that lot surrender and they, uh, they show white flags and then the enemy stops shooting at them and then there's a parley and they're led away and everything seems to be quite amicable and no one is, at least while I'm watching, mistreated. And I think, well, phew, that, that all seemed to be quite orderly. So actually these guys are disciplined enough to accept a surrender and will uh, stop shooting if you offer to surrender. And OK, and so now this seems like a viable behavior. Maybe we should surrender. I mean, there are an awful lot of them. And so we're probably likely to lose. And it seems that they will give us an opportunity to surrender. So if that opportunity is offered to us, then maybe we should take it as well. Surrendering is a, a, a possibly contagious behavior. And if you can get more and more guys to surrender, then then it snowballs and then eventually you've won the war. Hooray! So if you can persuade people to surrender rather than killing them, it's actually better. So maybe we should look more at the psychological effects of bombardment. You see, it wasn't until about World War I that uh, the military finally twigged that the main effect of bombardments is psychological. Um, it was discovered, for instance, that if you could kill 5% of the opposition, then the fighting effectiveness of the opposition would be halved. OK, so if there are a thousand troops over there and you kill 50 of them, then the uh, remaining troops will fight as effectively as just 500 
not 950. And if you can kill 10% of them, then their fighting effectiveness goes down to approaching zero. Of course, you can never guarantee this, but in the main, it goes down to approaching zero. Now, I strongly suspect that that's not because of the actual killing. I don't think it's because you've killed one tenth of them that the others uh, are incapable of carrying on fighting. I think it's got far more to do with what you have to do in order to kill 10% of them is what renders the, 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 the other 90% incapable or at least unwilling uh, to resist you. So by the time you've hit them with so much ordnance, so, so many loud bangs, so many flying splinters of death all over the place, you, you, enough to kill 10% of them, then the effect of all that renders the other 90% stuff it. I'm, I'm not going to fight. I've had enough of this.